Hello everyone, no, it's not Paul, it's me, James, filling in as Paul Gallivants in America, becoming best mates with Jurgen Klopp. He was at that pre-season game, 4-1 Liverpool beat Man United, and Jose Mourinho went from the special one to the grumpy one. This is not our, our team, this is not our squad. We start the game with uh, almost half of the players, they are not even going to belong to our squad. Mourinho is saying that he needs at least one more player before the start of the season, so who should that target be? Statman Dave is here to tell us who exactly Man United need for the start of the season. The other problem with the United squad, this winger, I don't really believe that's an issue. We'll also be discussing the race for seventh. Can Burnley deal with European football? Ped is here to offer some advice. Lads, can we just take five minutes here, do some <laughs> training sessions? It was just like a train here, a tram there. Think... And we'll take a look at the transfer window as a whole. Who has won it? Who's had the best window so far? We'll give our picks. So Man United lose 4-1. Pre-season game, doesn't matter. The fact is, to Liverpool makes it matter a little bit. Am I right in saying that? No, uh, maybe. Okay. Then the then I, the post match. I don't, I don't, I don't migrate. <laughs> yeah. And then the post match <laughs> conference happens, and Mourinho, who's been so grumpy for the last what three years, or but in specific this entire summer, says things like this: "We are not playing here to improve the team, the dynamic, or our routines. We are playing just to try to survive and not have some ugly results." Yes. This is not our team. <laughs> this is not our squad. Not even thirty percent of it. What good does any of these comments make from Jose Mourinho? What is he, what's he trying to achieve here? He's pushed for one, you're now focused on Mourinho. You're not focused on the team, the results, the players that may have not performed to the level that they should be playing at. So that's one thing. Okay. He's taken all the agenda onto him, which is a positive thing in terms of you want to hide some players that may not have performed at that level. In terms of the 30% of his squad, you've got to look at all the players that United had in the semi-finals and the finals of the World Cup. Yeah. You're looking at players like Romelu Lukaku, uh, Paul Pogba, David De Gea, three of United's best players. So that's another thing that he's putting down there. And again, pre-season, it doesn't really matter too much. You take away those penalties in that game, it's a 2-1 win for Liverpool. He, he's, so he's bringing it on himself. But if you're doing that again and again and again, with the amount of social media, the amount of opinions that come out on, on any bit of media that comes from a manager, is that the tone of Mourinho it doesn't work anymore. What do you think? I, th I honestly think he's just sending a message. And if you were Manchester United fan, and you'd looked at the business Liverpool have done this summer, and you've seen all those players they've brought in, you'd be rightly worried, thinking, well, we're second at the moment, we're trying to achieve first, and yet we've got this other team coming, you know, coming behind us who, who, have, who really want to improve and look like they've got the number on Manchester City. So he represents, I think, a lot of Man United fans with this worry, and I think that's what he's trying to just maybe get over as well. And, OK, he said as well that there is players he wants. They really haven't made a sign in have they That's made a huge sign? Note. Yeah, well, they've got Fred, Fred Delo, oh. Lee Grant. Lee Grant. Big so, keeper. Big Lee Grant. Big Lee Grant. He did a good job. So he hasn't made a sign on of any note. So before I kind of tackle what you're saying about how other Man United fans are saying, mm. uh, are feeling, you're saying that Mourinho is essentially just being that face of what Man United fans feel about this summer as a whole. Would you, would you agree with, with that? Are Man United fans themselves feeling a bit grumpy about this summer and the season? Eight? I think the big thing is that the signings are a little bit niche in a way where nobody's excited about Fred, nobody's excited about Delo because maybe they've not they watched don't know them. About him. Yeah. And those two players are really exciting and that's the kind of thing that it's not your, your big cheese, it's not your Gareth Bale that has been linked with United for so long, not coming this summer, not going to ever probably yeah. join. It's not that big guy, it's not your Pogba, it's not your Lukaku. And that's kind of how United positioned themselves with this Galacticos model. But this summer, what they actually needed is these workmanlike guys. A workmanlike central midfielder, a fullback that's good. And I think that's one of the problems that I think Liverpool have done really good business because, again, they've looked at problems in their squad. Goalkeeper, bought the you know, most expensive goalkeeper of all time. Mm. They've looked at central midfielder. Oh, could we get some quality in there? And Naby Keita comes in, brilliant player. Shakiri, we need a bit of depth up front. So I think they've solved their problems, but it's still open for United. I think United need a centre-half and a, maybe a full-back and you're, kind of, you're good. You know, you've, you've dealt with the issues that are present in the squad, but they're not exciting signings, you know what I mean? They're not yeah. like but so goal to, scorer. So that. to go back a tiny bit, when it comes to Mourinho and the way that he, he portrays the feeling amongst the whole squad and, and almost a lot of negativity towards Valencia. But let me jump in there. Sure. So, so is that the right... Is that the, you're the leader of this club? But Shouldn't then, you be putting forward a more positive you've, idea? You've got to remember, Mourinho does something for the media to, to do. He, he, every single comment Mourinho says is for a reason. Inside, if you watch any of the footage of the initiations that United are doing, you, you read anything about the feeling of the squad, all really positive. Whereas Mourinho's giving this sort of desperate, oh, everything's rubbish on the side, mm. but actually inside the squad, 
Everyone's happy. See, Everyone's thing... playing. A, you know, it, it's good. It, there's a lot of talk of this being a really good training camp. And again, but that, how can it be a really that... good training camp when none of those, one so of that... the players that you you want aren't there? And he says that in the press, and that's understandable. But the same things happen for Man City. The same things happening for for Spurs. I think that sooner or later, that's going to drip down to the players. This this. Well, it's supposed to drip. Well, it can't drip up, obviously, because that would just be weird. But it's supposed to, the message is supposed to go up rather than down, isn't it? The players are professionals, they turn up, they do a job. His message always seems to be at this point of his stage of his career at any club is. The message needs to get upstairs. And now, maybe again, it is just a, it is just for the media that he's trying to tell everybody that he's trying to do these deals that other people are like, why haven't Man United bought this player or that player? Or why weren't we in for this player? Maybe that's it. Maybe he's just saying, oh, I'm trying. It's just somebody else isn't doing their job. Where in reality, it's just like, you know, in two weeks, this doesn't matter. We start with the players we've got. And once, well, as soon as we get to that window, Shilton, which obviously is a lot sooner, mm. then, then everything changes. It focuses on who we've got, not who we want. That's something, again, that you, that's not on your little you know, sheet of, of comments. One of the things that he said is, if we don't sign anyone, I'm happy with our squad. Came second in the Premier League last season. We made two good signings. Um, Lee Grant for got third choice keeper. I am happy with that. But what we're seeing is this media agenda where you're not seeing any of the positivity. Yeah, James, you're with it. your media agenda. <laughs> I've got no agenda. Piers I'm... Morgan's your... So, hey, it's your email address. Idol. Idol. <laughs> Absolute <laughs> idol he is. Absolutely I not. I used to take him cups of tea every morning. <laughs> so, right, hang on. Let's, let's talk about this one player that he wants then. Okay. Yeah. Who, who should be the, the target? Because he's saying that he wants two. Yeah. Uh, he said that he's given a, a, a long list of, of names that he wants. If he's only going to be able to get one, who would you want that one to be? I'd say it'd be a left back. I think at centre half, there's quite a lot of centre backs that could step up. Lindelof Bay would be the pairing, maybe. Seeing two and Zabi, Fosu Mensa playing reasonably well against Liverpool. I know the result was bad, but the three centre halves played quite well for me. I think the, on the, the other problem with the United squad, this winger, I don't really believe that's an, an issue. I think with Jess Lingard, Form last season, right side winger. Yeah, with Chong coming in, like there's there's players there that could play there. Rashford could play out there. So I think if you're looking at one signing, I'd go with a left back because that's a, a little bit of a. Ashley Young's obviously played there. You know, for all of his you know criticism he gets, he's consistent. He's a seven out of ten player. But United need something else if they want to win the Premier League. They need uh, you know a a Mendy type fullback or a Walker, someone that's really going to mm. take the side forward. I think that's important. Just, just do not think they still need a. A Kevin De Bruyne kind of player, a, a Modric kind of player, you know, someone in the midfield is going to actually tick, keep it ticking so over. That's what Fred is. Do you think? Uh, Absolutely. I will see. I, I, we will see. Yeah, we'll I, see. I, I will see. We will see. But yeah. I, I, he doesn't. He doesn't set the world on fire for me. I just think that they, 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 they really need someone in the middle of the park who can move the ball. So that, that's, Matt, it, that's, it, that's his whole game. Seriously, no, that's his whole what, game. That's what I look Fred at Matt, gets it, moves it, get moves it around. Will allow Pogba to play higher. We'll be able to control it deep in midfield. You watch him against City, against Roma in the Champions League last season. Fantastic on the ball. He's a mix of two players. He, he presses, he wins the ball really well. He's like a ball winning midfielder off the ball. But then when they get the ball, he drops back and he becomes a playmaker. So what you're ex basically saying, he's just a midfielder? No, he's, he's no, 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 no. But he is actually just a midfielder. Because no, that's what that's no, what that's what midfielders, right? That's too easy. No, that's, that's, what too, what midfielders, that's, too, easy. Right? that's too easy. That's it's what just a midfielder. Well, that's just what... box to box when you're describing no, no, but... every single midfielder well, that's what... in the football. That's what... Absolute horse muck. That's mate. what I'll argue. No, no, <laughs> the definition of a midfielder. Well, no, that, that's what a midfielder used to be. That yeah. They could do everything, yeah, everything right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but this is the thing. They definitely didn't. No, they did. They that. didn't. They did. I used, to watch, I used to watch them every week. You used to be one, didn't you, No, no. Don't be So, a midfielder that could do everything? Yeah. Like, you know... For example, Everton. Pat Patrick Vieira. Slowly Everton then. <laughs> Patrick Vieira used to be able to do everything. Thomas Gravis and Lee Carsley were a great... Burnley, second leg. They've had a nightmare here. They get to the Europa League for the first time in, I think it's 53 years. Who comes out of the hat? Aberdeen. Aberdeen. What's wrong with that? Well, it's, not, it's not the away trip that you wanted. It's not the European tour that you wanted, is it? Well, it's... You start local and move on, don't you? I mean, that's, be, positive and say, be positive and say they're going to get through and then when they get to the group stages, they'll get some nice ones. That's the way mm. you look at it. Okay. You know, you don't want to... Do you really want to be going to the arse end of Russia at yeah. this time of the year? No, yeah. and then not at this time. Do it time. now. No, 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 no. You do want it now in the summer. No, you want to... You want to... Oh, you win. You, Kalingrad's Still not in Russia. No one knows that. It's, it's <laughs> like Gibraltar. It's not... It's like, it is like being in Gibraltar and saying you're in, in the UK. It's, it's not real. It still counts. It's officially Russia. Okay. Okay, it's Blog's officially... still available on Ball Street. But right, European football for Burnley. Yeah. Amazing season last season. Yeah. Everton last season, that was that played a factor, the European football. Would you agree? Not, not, not as much of a factor as Ronald Koeman being an absolute dickhead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sean Dyke, and that was a, that was the major factor. Right. 
Yeah. Sean Dyche, I, yeah. I think we can all agree, is not a dickhead. No, it's great. I like Sean Dyche. Um, what advice would you give Burnley this season if they want to have to, to be able to kind of keep that decent position in the table? Don't buy three number 10s. Good. Don't buy three number 10s. Mm. Uh, Burnley are in a... Listen, look, they drew 1-1 in the first round. I, I, ima- I imagine they'll get through against Aberdeen. And obviously, so, yeah. then they'll have another, another... Their biggest problem is I don't think they've bought a player this summer. That's now, that, that's problem, normally yeah. been a very comfortable position for Sean Dyche. He can work with the players that he's got. He knows the players he's got. And I think, funny enough, someone like Michael Keane, he's a, he's, a, he's a clear indicator of when you've got a player and you put him in a system and everyone knows what they're doing, a player can be elevated. Yeah. But... If he's got European football, how does he suddenly start managing the Thursday to Sunday when his squad just starts getting a little bit bare and a little bit bare? Can you see them doing the same thing as last Absolutely season? Absolutely not. Anyway? No, the, if if I were Burnley, I'd be like, look, right, we're in Europe for the first time in 50-odd years. Let's go as far as we can and let's almost stay up. That yeah. should be our aim in the Premier League, yeah. to stay up. And I honestly think that'll be a problem. Burnley's results last year were a swing of a goal. They win 2-1, 1-0. They draw 0-0, draw 1-1. They stayed in games and they were good at doing that and they, they'd nick the goal at the right time. Mm. That's a problem in terms of doing that consistently for a long period of time yeah. is rare. Uh, you know, you look at expected goals, X, Y, Z. That's what happens. You can keep that for a little bit, but it'll start dropping. And I'd, I'd stick. You know, they've got the perfect team for the Europa League, that Atletico Madrid style, aggressive 4-4-2. You know, you want to go go Burnley or like Fiorentina or whoever you are. Yeah. You're popping down Burnley turf more. You're not <laughs> Burnley on a Thursday night. <laughs> yeah, you're not coming. What are you doing on Burnley on a Thursday that's night? The, that's the new phrase, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Stokes, yeah, look, they've gone down now. Can you do it at Burnley on a Thursday night? That's the that's big one. Oh, that's what really done us last season is not having that chance to to, to to go, lads. Can we just take five minutes here, <laughs> do some training <laughs> sessions? It was just like a train here, a tram there, I think as well a with, bicycle. Is that that'll be a really good test of Sean Dyche's mentality system, collective, whether the players know voice. what they're doing. Whereas, yeah, no, voice. Tr- 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 two yeah. press conferences <laughs> yeah. in three days. Oh, that's not do you good, know what I mean? That's going to be like, oh, yeah, you know. Oh, you know. I mean, it, it broke someone like Ronald Koeman. Yeah. Ronald Koeman's <laughs> always been that manager that's been sort of, know. you know, bouncing from broke. football. See him at the end of it. Doing a good old job here, there. See him at the end of it. My God, yeah. he, looked, he looked like he, he, he was sleeping in a tent. <laughs> <laughs> it was terrible. So, fast forward to sort of October, you know, Sean Dice is doing post match interviews and I'm, you know, the hovercraft back from. I think he'll go the other way. I think he'll go, it was really bad this game. It was because, honestly, the voice can't, it's going to go. The other way. way yes, we, we played Atletico Madrid on Sunday. It was already a Saturday, Thursday. I don't even know what day it is. <laughs> <laughs> the guys are getting everything. Um, so if they if they're not going to finish seventh, I was in a Vanarama van all the way there. <laughs> Stopped us on the border. The transfer window as a whole. Yeah. Who do you think's had the best transfer window? Liverpool. I think Wolves have got to be. No. For me, that's that's yeah. for them to go from where they are, which was. A awesome team in the championship. We, like, they we're absolutely awesome ran it. They were awesome. I didn't watch a lot of the championship. Off, What's it like? It's, it's well, like, there were, actually, there was Compensive. points. There was points last season. I was studying it quite a lot. <laughs> yeah, I must admit, I did beat them. So you know, that's. I mean, that's one game. Yeah, but it's a, it's it's always hard to know. Um, how a I'm team? Te- I'm telling you, Ped. Okay. Having watched Championship football, I'm no. telling you. But you don't Wolves watch it. But you don't watch a lot. And they've just made some really, really good signings. Yeah, but you don't so watch. I think a, they've had the best. You window. don't watch a lot of Premier League football. I do, mate. <laughs> Why? Do Why'd you bother? Because because one day oh. well, you never know. We might get back there. <laughs> you never know. Take your wife off. Please, yeah, just for a drink. I can't. So it can't be asked. Arsenal, <laughs> team that done well. They bought some aggressive so? players. They bought you know Lucas Torreira midfield, fantastic signing. Very you know he's the guy that Arsenal needed for the last 10 years, win the ball back X, Y and Z. But I like the likes like Licksteiner. Arsenal have liked that good, buy. Like, buy. Licksteiner is horrible. But he still haven't bought a centre-back though. But they've they got Socrates, Papa, good luck. Sta, Fopoulos. <laughs> well done. That's it. Good effort. Good effort. Uh, but yeah, he's got another aggressive player. Like they're, they're bringing players into the squad that you like, the old school Tony Adams Arsenal would have like been so, like... So you what you're saying in. is that they're, they're just going to be very angry next season. They'll press, they'll be aggressive. Unai Emery will set them up to kind of counter. I expect them on the first day of the season to maybe catch out City. Just because Pep Guardiola is going to be like, we're sort of still building our squad. A lot wow. of the players Arsenal have didn't really go to the World Cup. 5-0 City. 5-0 yeah, City. So for me, it's Wolves. For you, it's... I don't know. West Ham, maybe. West Liverpool, Ham. Liverpool, Liverpool, are definitely, Liverpool are definitely the ones who've made the best signings. Okay. I think Arsenal have bought a lot of players that they needed. They needed that bite. I think they've solved that problem. Exactly. Uh, there you have it. Uh, the anagram. I didn't even talk about it. But look, get your... Answers in, what does he normally do, Paul? I, I, I've normally switched off by now. He usually forgets about it. He normally forgets about it. So I've remembered, that's good. So, Anagram, let us know in the comments below. Also, let us know who you think has done the best business so far in the window and uh, what's going on with Mourinho. Is, he, is this the right tactic? Let us know in the comments below. Subscribe to Ball Street. Check out Statman Dave's channel. Check out Toffee TV. And we'll see you soon.